Good morning and welcome to worship this Sunday morning from Ascension Lutheran Church in Paradise Valley, Arizona. I'm Pastor Randy. We are shooting this morning from outside of the sanctuary in the back of our property lot. And this is a labyrinth that has been created by one of our members, Beth Overholt, for um, discernment, for being a place of peace and relaxation. And we want to thank her for having created this by transplanting uh, cactus and desert plants from her yard to this area. So thank you, Beth, for your work here. And we encourage anyone in the area to stop by and visit it during the week. And this morning, we have the Della Rosa family here from Ascension to help us with our opening. And I will let you introduce yourselves uh, by name. I'm Adler De La Rosa. Good morning, I'm Nicole De La Rosa. I'm Cara De La Rosa. And I'm Mateo De La Rosa. Our service this morning is going to be centered on the parable of the sower, which talks about the different types of soil that are necessary for plants to either thrive or they will get choked out. And um, so my title of the message this morning is called Taking Root. And Mateo has a little something to share about taking root. Most cacti roots don't go very deep, but they spread out very long to collect as much rainfall as possible. Yeah, so for some um, plants, for cacti in the desert, it's very different than in other areas of the world, right? So they don't go very deep. Do you have any other uh, fun facts about desert plants? Yes, so as well as protecting the cactus from herbivores, the stems prevent uh, water loss by uh, reducing the airflow uh, close to the cactus as well as providing a shade. Wow, interesting. And Carter, what do you know about the saguaro cactus? The saguaro cactus is the largest cactus in the U.S. It also can live up to be 200 years old. 200 years old? Wow, that's an old swarrow, isn't it? And huge. Yes. Very good. Nicole? Yes, and I researched the organ pipe cactus because I thought we have this beautiful organ at Ascension. So the organ pipe cactus, their flowers bloom at night and the bats pollinate the cactus. I thought that was interesting. And they also, bats live in them too. And bats they live in them. Wow, I didn't know that. All of these plants have to adapt to their environments. And these fun facts help to explain how plants survive in this desert environment. Well, I hope that you are able to kick back and relax for a few moments and to enjoy and take in worship with us as I share a little bit more about taking root in a few minutes.
The gospel lesson is from Matthew. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the words of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when a trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thrones, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and another thirty. Here ends the gospel of the Lord. Hi, it's Van and Mary Butler. We um, are going to sing and play, we have guitars, um, a great song, How Great Thou Art, great way to praise the Lord. Uh, if you want to sing along, it's in our hymn book. It's number 856. I enjoy gardening. 
When I'm able to dig my hands into the soil and to plant and to nurture uh, trees or bushes or plants from seeds or even transplants, it is almost like a connection to God for me. And then when I get to see these, these plants thrive, uh, to take root and to, and to grow, it's an extremely um, fulfilling experience. My fiance Alicia also enjoys gardening, and I have to acknowledge she's better at it than I am. In fact, while I mention about watching plants thrive after I have used my gardening skills, I too have watched plants choke and die. Some of those have died because of my lack of skills. I may not have put them in the correct place, um, or I may not have taken care of them or fertilized the way that I should have in order to help them start off. And other times, it's the environment. It may be too much sun or not enough sun, too much rain, not enough rain, too hot, too cold, generally too hot <laughs> in Arizona. But a lot of the times, it is connected with the condition of the soil. The soil might be too hard for the roots to be able to penetrate. It may be too rocky. Maybe the area is already overplanted and the roots of other plants are taking all of the water and nutrients away. Or maybe the mixture of nutrients that is in the ground is not the right mix for that particular type of plant. According to, the, to an online dictionary, the phrase taking root can be found and has two explanations. The first, in regarding to plants, when they begin to grow and draw nourishment from the soil through their roots. Connected with germination, or when plants begin to sprout, to emerge out of the ground. The second explanation is to become fixed or established, such as the idea took root in my mind. Both of these explanations connect with the parable of the sower. What is it that Jesus is describing as he's talking about the sower sowing seeds and explaining the different results of those seeds based on types of soil. According to the explanation that Jesus shared after telling the parable, it is connected to what are the effects of the Word, capital W, on our lives. And when I read that, I was taken back to John chapter 1, where it talks about the word, capital W. In the beginning was the word, capital W. And the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, without him nothing was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory and the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Is this parable of the sower describing Jesus as the seed rather than written words? And if you and I are the soil, our hearts, our minds, and our spirits, then this parable is more expansive than simply deepening our faith by reading more scripture. Maybe it's 
about Jesus being planted in us and how receptive is our soil? Have we cultivated and nurtured our soil, heart, mind, and spirit, for Jesus to take root, for his teachings to take root? And what are the results? A little further in John, we read Jesus saying, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. And then a few verses later, he talks to the disciples and he says, If you remain in me and my word in you, and as I read that, I'm recognizing, so if the Father is in Jesus and Jesus is in the Father, then when you see Jesus, you also see the Father. Well, then by correlation, if we are in Jesus and the word is in us, then people can see Jesus in us. What does the person sitting opposite of the table from you see in you? What do you see in the person on the other side? What has taken root in your heart, mind, and spirit that shows its fruits to others. I want you to think about this question for a moment. What is the condition of your soil? And I want you to keep that question in mind as I read the next couple of paragraphs that were written by Holly Heron, a professor at Christian Theological Seminary in Indianapolis. Soil, like human beings, is shaped by its environment. So if soil is walked on over and over again, beaten down so that it becomes packed hard, it is no longer fit for the planting of seeds. We see this in the human community too. People who have been walked on over and over and over again have developed a hardened exterior to protect themselves. Rocky soil, says Jesus, describes those who lack the staying power to deal with, well, rocky ground. When the going gets rough, they go into retreat. The soil filled with thorns easily translates into our overcrowded lives. There is no room in an already overplanted plot for anything else. And the good soil... It would be nice if it were as simple as buying a bag of good soil at the gardening center. A gardener will tell you, however, that good soil takes years to cultivate. It must be fed, nurtured by the remains of plants that have come and gone. It must be worked and reworked so that it becomes supple, but not worked so hard that its structure is broken down. And it must be replenished as seeds grow and draw on its nutrients. What is the condition of your soil? What has taken root inside of your minds, your hearts, and your spirits? Maybe you can connect with the experience of a hardened exterior that struggles to allow compassion in or even out. Maybe you are familiar with rocky ground where when difficult times come, it's easier to run than to stay and face them. 
And in fact, our senses are so overwhelmed by noise, by sight, by, by sounds, by voices that are trying to take up space in your mind and heart, trying to take root, some of them that you may want to plant and others you may wish to filter out. After telling the parable, Jesus said, He who has ears, let him hear. In fact, there are verses missing within this text of our reading today where Jesus says there are going to people who there are going to be people who don't hear and who don't see the things that are right in front of them. So we have to filter some of the voices, some of the noises that we take in from our eyes and our ears. We have to be working at cultivating and nurturing our soil so that there is space for Jesus and Jesus' teachings to take root. Because when we allow Jesus and his teachings to take root, that means we're saying no to other things that the world around us might consider to be a whole lot more important. And that's hard to do. It's hard to stand up against the popular voices, the popular messages of the world when we are cultivating our soil with the teachings of Jesus. Where do we see today the love and grace that Jesus lived, shared, and taught during his lifetime? There are examples throughout our community and our world. They don't get a whole lot of attention, but those are the things that we want to lift up. Where do you see Jesus in your neighbor? And how does your neighbor see Jesus in you? Jesus is also describing himself in, in another parable about being living water. Jesus is living water for our soil. And I hope today that you recognize Jesus loves you. No matter your past, no matter your present, the burdens that you have held on to or that continue to weigh you down have been forgiven. You are freed to move forward with new life, with good soil. And the good news is that there isn't just bad soil or good soil. Even by the description by Professor Heron, good soil was not always that way. It took work, it took cultivation, it took fertilizing, it took years to nurture it into good soil. And once it becomes good soil, that's not the end. It takes more work to continue to keep it at that point. And so we are challenged to do the hard work of cultivating and fertilizing, nurturing our soil where Jesus and Jesus' teachings take root within us and those around us can see the fruits of Jesus' presence. I pray today that you experience the peace, the love, the forgiveness, and the grace that comes with Jesus' presence in our soil. Please join me in prayer. Lord, we give you thanks today that there is no type of soil that is too big of a challenge for you. 
We give you thanks for those people who have you rooted deep inside of their hearts, their minds, and their spirits, and that they share your love and compassion with others. And Lord, we recognize that there are even places that we see saguaro and trees growing out of rock formations that we aren't completely limited by our soil, that you can make seeds grow anywhere, that there is hope for all of us as we transition from one type of soil to the next. And we confess, Lord, that sometimes we allow our gardens to become overgrown with things that may not be nurturing, they may actually be toxic. Help us to weed those things out. And help us to see you in the face of others. All of this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It is my responsibility as a pastor and one of my great joys to declare to you through the love and the grace and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Please join me today in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Please receive the sending blessing from me today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you God's peace. Amen.